Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian May in the Cal OES Newsroom, and I'm joined by Sean Smith, who is the statewide debris coordinator for Cal OES. We're talking a lot about the debris removal. That's the next big phase that we need to talk about. So I just want to ask you some of the questions that we're getting. I know you're hearing a lot, and we can kind of talk about. The first one really is, when and where are you deciding to start this debris removal process? Okay, so as the debris removal process progresses, what we're doing is we're identifying sensitive facilities. I'll call them that. Uh, schools, hospitals, daycares, um, uh, care facilities, things that uh, that we wouldn't want burned ash right. anywhere near. Right. So we're looking at those and we're going to identify those first. As we identify those, those will be the areas which the teams will start doing the debris removal in. We're also going to be looking at in the environment. We're going to be looking at waterways, streams, creeks. If there's any uh, burned structures that are directly threatening those, right. those creeks, rivers, and streams, those will be uh, also prioritized. But uh, first focus is life and safety. So we're going to be looking at those uh, those sensitive facilities first. And as far as when, I know there's more than one phase to this. We've already kind of begun part of the process, but can you talk about that? Absolutely. So it's a two-phase process. It's a, it's The first phase is what we call our household hazardous waste sweeps. That's where the teams are going in and they're removing things like propane tanks, paint cans, pesticides, herbicides, things they can physically see on the surface. They're going in and removing those, bulk right. asbestos those teams will go in. Now phase two will come right behind them. As phase two progresses, the debris teams will go in and remove that debris. That debris then will be uh, trucked to an appropriate landfill and then we'll scrape that property down and test that soil to make sure the soil on that property is cleaned. So, uh, my next question was what physically are you doing and that's kind of the process is removing everything that could possibly be there. Absolutely. If there's any burned material, any burned structure, any, any ash, Anything like that is going to be removed off that property. We will take it out. It will stay um, very wet so it doesn't contaminate anything while we're trucking it. Right. And we'll go to a designated landfill for that material. One of the big questions that we're hearing a lot is how is this going to work with my insurance and who's paying for this? Okay. So if a homeowner has insurance and they have a dedicated portion of their insurance for debris removal, that portion of the, of the insurance proceeds will need to come back to the program. That's uh, what we describe as a duplication of benefits. Basically, the insurance company is paying folks for work that we're going to do for right. them. Now, we know that, that debris clearance costs more than what their insurance proceeds or what their insurance gives them for debris. So at that point, there's no, ex there's no other expense to the homeowner except what their insurance has given them for debris. The rest, the rest of the cost or any cost to any uninsured or underinsured facilities or burn homes will be funded both by the uh, federal government and by the state government. Just to be clear, I get $10,000 from my insurance for debris removal. It costs you 40000 to clean my property. You're not coming after me for that other thirty. That's what you're saying. No, that other thirty will be covered by the federal and the state gotcha. government. Just out of the insurance that you're getting. All right, so uh, we talked about kind of what you're testing for. Talk about the process. You want the, the ground to be returned to the property owners as clean as it was before the fire happened. That's a long process. Can you just describe that a little bit? Yes, so the big thing is once we get the, the structural debris and ash cleared, we have to scrape off about six inches of dirt. Now that's on the average on a property, some, some more, some less, right. but about six inches. After we scrape that six inches, we're gonna test that soil on that property. We're gonna test to make sure that there's nothing in that dirt that shouldn't be there. And what we do is we set a standard outside of the fire area, outside of the burned structures. Right. We test the soil outside of those structures to see what is supposed to be in that soil. Um, an example, as we talked about earlier, is, is some areas may have naturally occurring asbestos. They may have naturally occurring um, other other items like arsenic. Right. So we know that that's supposed to be there, but but we want to make sure that we cleaned anything that was left over from the structural debris. Because even within one county, one part of the county may be completely different soil structure than the other. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. Um, we use Napa County, for example. We have the Tubbs Fire on the west side of the county, right. Nunn's Fire in the center of the county, and the Atlas Fire on the east side. All three of those have different geological um, uh, uh, formations in right. them. So each one of those will have a different soil composition. So be, uh, each one of them will have a separate cleanup standard. This is, the cleanup effort is unprecedented. We've never had numbers like this in the state of California. I believe it was 8,700 structures burned. What's the time frame for you handing clean properties back to homeowners? Okay, the, our final cleanup to get it all done is early 2018. However, properties will be completed sooner. As we start a property, right. each parcel, it's about a 30 day from start of that parcel to the end of that parcel, the cleaning. 
Um, we will have hundreds of crews, so there'll be hundreds of properties released back to the homeowners in batches throughout the whole process over the course of all the counties. You talk about hundreds of crews. If you live in one of the burned areas, just be aware there's going to be a lot of trucks moving in and out of the areas, correct? There's going to be a huge amount of traffic. I mean, we, we, we're going to work on our traffic routes. We're going to post them. Everybody's going to know where, they're, where the trucks are going to be going. Uh, one of the things we would always ask folks to do is, hey, if you don't need to be on that road that we're going to be running those right. trucks on, please stay off of it because it's going to be very congested. Um, the trucks are going to be going to multiple locations. They're going to be leaving that, that, that central location of the fire. However, they're going to disperse out to different landfills. So um, there will be uh, a large amount of heavy equipment traffic coming out. So we just ask people to please be safe, watch for the heavy equipment, and um, give them their room. Sean, thanks for joining us. I know you have a lot of work to do. Thanks for watching. Thank you.